This is going to be about chemical equations. So I'm going to do a couple of one or two videos. I'm not sure how long they're going to take. Um, it's a good idea while we go through equations to have all of your nomenclature stuff out. So I'm assuming you've gone through the nomenclature slides and you got a good feel for that. But I would have that nomenclature, um, the, the, uh, the flow chart from the first page of the nomenclature, a periodic table, the list of polyatomic ions, because we're going to do chemical equations from words. And this would be a good opportunity for you to practice writing, uh, writing formulas as well, because you've got to write the formulas to write the chemical equations. So keeping that in mind, uh, and then again, this is a video. You can pause the video anytime. I would recommend it. You go through the PowerPoint along with the video. You can pause the video when you want, and you can go back and forth through the PowerPoints. And again, uh, you can contact me through Zoom during my office hours. I'm more than happy to go through stuff with you. All right, so let's go ahead and start going through these. So chemical equations represent chemical changes. A lot of stuff can be evidence of a chemical reaction. Remember that in a chemical reaction, new substances are formed. So the bottom line is if you observe something that wasn't there before, then you're going to, then it's a chemical reaction. Now, how can you tell? Well, sometimes you mix two liquids together and you form a solid, or maybe you'll give off some heat or things like that. So for example, the next slide, these are good examples, right? So a color change. Now again, if you mix something blue with something yellow and it turns green, that's not necessarily a color change. That's just mixing. So you kind of have to know what you've done, right? Formation of a solid. Heat is frequently a good uh, example of or good evidence of a chemical reaction. Giving off light when it wasn't doing that before. These are all things that indicate new substances are formed. Okay, formation of a gas. We have to be careful because if you're boiling water, it forms a gas, but that's a physical change. But in general, you're looking for evidence of a new substance. All right, so chemical equations are the way we represent chemical changes. So we use chemical equations. They have both qualitative and quantitative information. The quantitative stuff will really be more in the stoichiometry slides when I put those together, and that's coming soon to a lecture near you. That's the material that'll be on homework nine. Stuff we're doing now, I'm sorry, homework 10. Stuff we're doing now is on homework nine. Uh, sometimes we'll have other descriptive information, what are called phase labels. But first of all, what we do is we write reactants and products. And so you want to get used to some of the terms. It might be reactants form products, or products are formed by reactants. This is formed from that, depending on how it's worded. The arrow is yields or makes, something like that. All right. These are uh, phase labels. So something like gas, liquid, solid. Aqueous means it's dissolved in water. So just to give you a, a difference, sodium chloride liquid would be melted salt. Sodium chloride aqueous would be salt water. So aqueous means in water, mean, meaning it's a mixture. For my class, I don't care if you put phase labels on or not. And I won't penalize you if you do them wrong. So you have nothing to lose. It, it, they will become more important later. So it's really important. So it's a good idea to start the habit, especially now because it doesn't cost you anything. I won't penalize you if it's done wrong. Sometimes other things like temperatures or solvents and reaction conditions can make a big difference, not in Chem 152. As you progress, that'll be much more important. All right. So just as an example, let's look at what's visually going on. So if we were burning methane, all right? So methane is CH4. You would have to be told that. Oxygen and then you have carbon dioxide and water. Now, how do we know what the products are? We're going to get to that uh, in a different set of slides. So right now, I'm giving you this equation, all right? If you look at this, if you start counting atoms, though, you'll see that there's some interesting things here. The left side of the equation, you have two oxygens. See that, the red ones? Over here, there's three oxygens. And here, there's one, two, three, four hydrogens. Here, there's only two hydrogens. So what that means that can't happen because the law of conservation of matter has to be obeyed. That means we can't, we didn't magically turn, say, a hydrogen into an oxygen. So how do we account for that? Well, we, again, I just said this, uh, we have to create, you have to make the equation balanced. Let me explain what balanced means, right? So balanced means that the law of conservation of matter is obeyed. So matter can change form 
and in a chemical reaction, what's happening is things are getting rearranged. Again, if you go back a couple of slides, just to see what was going on there, see how the, the atoms, what's, what's attached to what got rearranged, that's what goes on in a chemical equation. Anyway, so this is another example, and we'll talk about why it's not balanced. So if you count atoms, just do some bookkeeping. I have nitrogen and hydrogen. Over here, I have nitrogen and hydrogen. So you have two nitrogens and two hydrogens. Here I have one nitrogen and three hydrogens, right? So it looks like we converted a nitrogen into a hydrogen, but that's not what happened. So how do we fix this? How do we make it balanced, right? So same here, right? What we can do is we can put coefficients in blue here in front of things, and that will balance it. So the two, it's like multiplying the O2 by two. So see how there's two O2s here? Also two waters. If you count though, now I have one, two, three, four hydrogens, two, three, four hydrogens, one, two, three, four oxygens, one, two, three, four oxygens. All right. And this is basically what I just said. All right. So the two distributes through, the two distributes through. It's like putting parentheses around the molecule. You cannot change subscripts though. By the way, uh, on the module, there are some really nice videos that my colleague found. If you want to watch those as well, those are YouTube videos in addition to mine. So you can look at those. It's a completely different person, but they're actually really good. That's what this says right here. All right, so these are my rules for balancing an equation. So rule zero, and I call it rule zero because it is so important. Yep, I heard you. Uh, that you have to do it before you start. And that is, you have to have the correct formulas. Once the formulas are correct, you never change a subscript. If you change a subscript, the gods of chemistry will become angry, the skies will darken, and a bolt of lightning will hit you. Now, actually what happens is if you change a subscript, it's a different compound. So we use coefficients. And then the other three are just good advice. So if there's an element by itself, it's easy to say that last. It's a good idea to balance oxygen last, maybe hydrogen next to last, just because oxygen is frequently found in a lot of compounds. So I'm gonna, we're going to just go through some examples now. All right, so the example I showed you, how do we balance it? So this is where we were. So what you want to do while you're learning this is, again, make yourself go step by step. So here, right, we're going to fix this, but we can, we, this is unbalanced. The way we can do is we have to fix the nitrogen. So to fix the nitrogen, we can put a 2 in front of this compound it's called ammonia, remember from your nomenclature. Also, remember from your nomenclature why these are diatomic. All right, so this put a 2 in front of there. So now you can see I've updated my bookkeeping. I put a two, that 2 there, right? Now the hydrogen is a 6, though. So I've fixed the nitrogen problem. The hydrogen now needs to be adjusted. So maybe you can think ahead, right? Exactly. So when we fix the hydrogen, we just need to multiply something by 2 to get 6. And so we'll put a 3 in front of there, and now it's balanced. So anytime you change a coefficient, you need to change your bookkeeping, redo your bookkeeping. Okay. All right, so this is the summary for each coefficient recount. If you're going around in a circle and you feel like you just cannot get it to balance, you probably have a formula problem. All right. Let's go through another example. This one's got a little bit of a twist. So here, what you can do on the PowerPoint, you can just click on it. I'm, you can hit pause on the video. On the PowerPoint, you can just click on it and this thing will appear. So we're gonna first do the bookkeeping. All right, so there's, see the carbons, there's four on the left and one on the right. Hydrogens, there's 10 on the left and two on the right. And the oxygens, there's two on the left and there's actually three on the right, two plus one. So let's fix the carbon. So you try it yourself. You hit pause on the video. Now I'm going to click it. And so what we need to do is we need to fix the carbon by putting a 4 in front of the carbon dioxide. Okay. So we'll do that. Now we need to recount. So I'm going to do these kind of quickly. The carbon is, of course, fixed. That's going to affect the oxygen, though. right? The hydrogen didn't change, but the oxygen is now, whoops, what just happened? I went too far. The oxygen is now 8 plus 1 is 9. Right? So now we're starting from here. Now we need, we'll go and we'll fix the hydrogen. 
So what number should we put in front of the water? That's right, we'll put a five in front of the water. So now let's count again, right? So the carbon is, didn't change. The hydrogen, of course, changed to 10, which is what we were shooting for. The oxygen, how many oxygens do we have? We have eight plus five is 13, right? So now the question is, how are we gonna balance that two and the 13? So here's the trick, you can use fractions. So if we multiply 13 halves times two, that gives us 13. So if we do that, now it looks like this. Problem is we don't like fractions because in a balanced chemical equation, this is good for one of the equation, meaning this could be read one molecule of C4H10 reacts with 13 halves of a molecule. There's no such thing. But it is balanced, so this is where you can use math. If we just multiply everything by this denominator, right, it'll stay balanced because we multiply everything by that. So if you watch, I put a two and I kind of put, you can see I put the whole thing in parentheses. And so now when I distribute the two through, and you can verify your, for yourself that it's still balanced. Right? All right, so try this one on your own. And I'm gonna click through it. So the first step, then this is gonna be the end of the, the slides. The first step is to get the formula. So iron, right? Sometimes you can do an intermediate step, a word equation. Iron plus oxygen gives you iron three oxide. If you need to do that intermediate step, then do that intermediate step, okay? So now iron is Fe. Oxygen, remember the gens are O2. Fe2O3, just as a review from your nomenclature, right? Iron three plus, right? Oxygen is A2 minus. And so if we're gonna put these together, we need to get to six. So we're gonna need two of the Fe's and three of the O's. Getting that formula is critical. All right, so now we can fix the iron. We can multiply by, that's right, a two. So we do that, and now it's now the iron's balanced. So to fix the oxygen, let's look at what we did last time. What number times two is three? And the answer is three halves, but we don't like fractions, so we multiply the whole thing by. That's right, the whole thing gets multiplied by two, and there is the balanced chemical equation. All right, so that's chemical equations and how to balance them, which should be it. Okay, watch the videos, the ones that the other ones are quite good as well. The next set of slides that we'll go through where is uh, types of reactions, and you'll get a lot of opportunity to practice balancing equations. Okay, take care.